This Durston x -Mid Pro has become one of the most popular tents for thru-hikers and lightweight backpackers. This is a high-performance tent. I wanna break down what I think this is really excels at and where it really does have some limitations. Make no mistake, the x -Mid Pro is a super sweet tent. It's a Dyneema composite fabric or DCF fabric, which is ultra light. This tent weighs 17 ounces. That is pretty dang impossibly light. I've been using this for the last 10 months and I've got some thoughts. I have seen where this tent really excels and I've seen where, you know, sometimes I don't love this tent for a few very specific reasons. So if you are thinking about dropping some serious cash, I want you to know what you're getting into before you buy. This is a trekking pole tent. So that means it's going to be used in some pretty specific scenarios that might instantly rule out this tent for you if you're not really a trekking pole user and if you're not really doing long distance trails where this thing is really going to excel. Let's take a look inside. So one of the things that makes the Durston tent unique is its geometry. And it's using a rectangular outer tent with a diagonal inner tent. So this tent is kind of going catty corner from that corner off to the opposite one up here. To maximize my space, I then wanna go catty corner again, right next to the trekking pole here. And on this opposite side, I'm kind of leaning in this way. So that is how I get the most living space out of this. And it's kind of an odd way to do it, but it works. And I do think that it's pretty smart of Dan Durston, the inventor of this tent, to use these angles in a pretty unique way that I don't really see on other tents in the backpacking market. This space is good for some gear storage. I definitely wanna keep my feet away from that space as it will rub on here and soak up a lot of moisture. This is a pretty unique tent and it's honestly become one of my favorites, but it does have some limitations and some things that I think if you're gonna buy it, you should really know about. There's no inner mesh that's creating a secondary boundary in between your living space and what's protecting you from the elements. And this is a really good example right now as it starts to rain on me here, what is gonna be going on with this tent. Now this is a super long trekking pole tent and theoretically it can accommodate longer, taller hikers. I'm six feet tall and pretty much I have, I do have some extra room at the top of my tent, but what you'll notice is that this tent wall is gonna come down pretty close to my face here. And on the opposite side, my feet, I think this can accommodate a six foot two hiker. And after that, it's gonna be pretty tough sledding in here. Ultralight single person tents are inherently tiny, tiny spaces. And you often have to feel like you're army crawling into them. And this actually is pretty good for not having to feel like you're army crawling. At the apex, there is a pretty tall amount of room for a ultralight single person tent. But it is narrow. I don't have a lot of lateral side to side. I made a short video about this tent and a lot of people seem to think that there was no inner mesh. And there is actually an inner mesh that you can fully close in and not have bugs be an issue. And I actually really like the way that these are stitched together and you have this no inner mesh here and then you have inner mesh here that creates the kind of enclosed living space. It stopped raining. Let's go back outside. <laughs> Got a very beautiful fall day out here. So this is kind of a funky tent. It has some funky shapes to it. And sometimes it looks great and sometimes it looks weird. I think one of the biggest downfalls of the tent is that if you're not setting this tent up on very flat ground, it introduces some wonky angles and that really affects the setup of the tent. Right now I have some sloping ground coming down and then there's some undulations in the ground and it's creating some difficulties. You'll notice that I've got a pretty good size gap underneath the tent over here that gets continually smaller the ground kind of comes up at this corner and makes this a non-perfect angle. Right there is my highest point of the tent. It makes it difficult to actually just get this tent to sit really nice and clean. And where that really comes into play, it's really difficult to get this to not droop down 
and create a much lower space on the interior of my tent. Another thing that I found is that if you don't use the guy lines, you really diminish your interior living space once again. So one of the original selling points of this tent is that you only need four stakes to stake out the tent and you can pop it up and you're good to go, which technically is true. I need at least eight tent stakes to really feel like I've set this thing up well. So one, I need one at the doors on each of the two doors. And then I need also my guy lines to be staked out. And that really helps draw out that interior walls they do kind of sag. These just kind of droop in if you don't pull these away. One other cool tip that I picked up from my buddy Steven is if you grab a stick and you kind of prop that up and actually create an angle that goes straight out or even a little bit up, you once again create more interior living space. And that also really helps. By staking this one out, the door becomes a lot less difficult to open and it gives you a much better, more defined vestibule space while also just creating a very smooth surface for you to be able to one-handedly open up the zipper. We got ourselves a rainy day here. This is actually perfect that it's raining like this because this introduces my next biggest flaw with this tent, and that is moisture management. This is really a flaw of single wall tents, more so than the Durston. There are two vents, one up here and one opposite here, but they just get overwhelmed. And what I've found frequently is that I'll wake up in the morning and everything on the tent is completely wet with water and it, try, and it just introduces moisture into the tent. And the biggest problem area is then where this is very close to the head of my sleeping bag and down here, the foot of my sleeping bag often gets pretty wet. Now that won't always be the case. It won't, every backpacking trip is a little bit different. When I was in Switzerland and on the Tour de Mont Blanc, it wasn't as bad. When I was actually in the winter camping with this thing, it wasn't bad at all. But on rainy, moist days with a lot of monsoon activity, it was very, very wet inside my tent. This is a pretty long tent, and this is actually a fairly wide tent for a one person tent. So you really need about as much space as you do for a two person tent to set this thing up. So it's kind of difficult and a big challenge if you're just trying to sneak in to somewhere that's pretty narrow and you don't have the ability to stake it out and use those guy lines and all of that. So the space required for this tent is a lot more than I would have expected for an ultralight one person backpacking tent. So where does this tent excel and who's it for? Well. The first thing is, is that this is the lightest tent I've ever used. At 16, 17 ounces, that is just mind bogglingly light. And it still blows my mind that they, that Dan Durston was able to come up with a tent that's so clever and so light while being pretty robust. Like this thing has actually withstood some pretty serious weather. So I've been in snowstorms, I've been in 30, 35, 40 mile an hour gusting windstorms on the Colorado Trail. And this thing is rock solid. Actually, one of the things that I love about it is when you have the rigidity of trekking poles versus you know the more flexible inner tent poles, these things are amazingly strong. And then especially when you add in some guy lines and the extra tent stakes, this thing doesn't budge in a windstorm. And it really sheds rain and snow and wind very, very well. For being such a lightweight tent, this thing is amazingly good at withstanding inclement weather. The Durston tent is really a through hikers dream tent. This thing is amazing. I saw it all over the Colorado Trail. I saw it all over the Tour de Mont Blanc in Europe. And it is just a kick-ass tent. And I do love it. It is definitely in my favorite pieces of gear that I've started using over the last year. And whenever I'm backpacking solo, I've been opting for this one person ultralight tent. But that being said, I don't recommend this tent for you if you are more of a casual backpacker or if you're really not intent on using it in a through hiking kind of mentality. Because it uses trekking poles instead of the interior tent poles, well, you're gonna have to bring trekking poles. And a lot of times on some backpacking trips, you just don't want to. There are so many people out there that I feel like are just gonna use, prefer using that freestanding tent. However, 
if you're thinking about doing some long treks or you just want a super lightweight shelter for you, no matter what you're doing, if you're doing some bike packing, if you're doing canyoneering and you want a shelter or whatever it is where you might want that freedom of a really, really light tent, well, this thing is super badass. I definitely endorse it. And after 10 months of use, I'm gonna keep on using this thing. Thanks for watching my thoughts on the X-Mid Pro. And if you wanna see this puppy in action, check out my recent video on the Colorado Trail. I think you'll like it.